Hey there, internets. I'm Michael, and this is Two Can Play That Game, bringing you another game night in review. And this time, I'm talking my first impressions of Patchwork. So, what is Patchwork? Well, it's a two-player only game. Let's start there. It's a game that's themed about making a quilt uh, out of different various sizes and shapes of patches. Um, and you have buttons that score you points. Now, thematically, this has never really appealed to me. That's why I'm quite late getting to it. However, it's definitely appealed to my wife thematically. And it, it's a game that has been very much labelled as one of the best two-player games around at the moment. So it was one that I was eager to try. The nature of the game is that you have a central board that is a spiral. Now, that represents time. When you take a tile, it'll have a cost in buttons and a cost in time. You'll move a number of spaces along this central track equal to the number of time. On this track, there are buttons, and when you pass over a button, that means you'll gain income based on the number of buttons that are on your personal player board. The way the turn order works is it's not a back and forth, I take a turn, you take a turn, etc, etc, as most games are. The way this works is it's whoever is furthest back on the track will go. So if you take a tile that costs you a lot of time, you will move a long way along this track. And then the next person can take lots of tiles that take little amounts of time to catch back up. So they can have go after go after go. And on top of this, there are other points on that track that are just little square single patches that will give you no points, but they'll let you fill in those difficult to fill blanks because at the end of the game, blank spaces where you've not put a patch on your player board are gonna be minus points. So you take it in turns buying the tiles and you start with a certain number of buttons and each tile will say on it, how many buttons it costs and how much time it costs. Some will be a smaller number of buttons, but a large amount of time or vice versa or equal of both. And there is a, a circle of the tiles that form your central buying area. And along this circle is a pawn. And you can buy only one of the tiles that is one of the three tiles clockwise from that pawn. So the way you control where that pawn moves in relation to what that then allows the other player to buy can be a big factor in this game. So when you buy a tile, you move a pawn to where that tile that you bought was of those three. So that's how the pawn is therefore moving along and therefore how the tiles you're choosing change. And obviously you just keep going around this circle with the pawn. The game will actually end when in that central track, you reach the middle. Once both players reach that middle, that's the end of the game, you then compare scores. So I talked about income. What that is, is some of the tiles you can buy have buttons on them. When you go over a button space in the middle board that entitles you to income, you'll gain a number of buttons as denoted on the tiles that you have already laid out on your player board. So you've got to balance getting the tiles you need in order to fill your board so that you're not suffering negative points and also you can get bonus points for being the first to get a certain shape of board and also getting those buttons so that you're getting income so that you can buy more tiles. So it is a very, it's a very simple game, a very basic game, but with a lot of depth of strategy there. A surprising amount of strategy, I would actually say. You see, I did terribly. I had a score of minus 18 uh, and my wife had a score of 29 points. Now, despite that, I enjoyed the game. I enjoyed the way the me mechanisms all worked. It was very smooth, very elegant, and it just worked, but it didn't feel simple. It didn't feel like there were no choices, like it was always going to be the same game, like it was just, uh, yeah, and I do that, and I do that. No, it felt engaging the whole way along. But that wasn't a long time. I think it took us 30 minutes for our first game. You could probably, once you're more used to the game, etc., knock a game out in probably 15, 20 minutes. It is, it is a filler. Now, my wife was quite eager to play this again, potentially. Um, I think this is 
a very good game. I very much enjoy it. As I say, the amount of strategy there is in when you're picking what to take, do you take the big expensive one knowing that you're then allowing your opponent to have lots of turns? Do you take lots of cheap ones? Do you take tiles in order to go, oh, well, I know they need this one to fill that shape. So if I only buy the first tile, then that's not within their free and there's nothing useful for them there. You can control what is available to your other player a bit. And yeah, so a very good game, a very strategic game. And that's why I had a negative score. And talking on forums and to other people in groups, etc. online, this is a hugely common thing in a first game. In fact, it's fairly common for both players to have a negative score in the first game. Um, so my wife obviously is a uh, savant at this, uh, did fantastically. But yeah, it's, it's fun, it's gauging, there's so much tactics there. Would it work for more players? No, definitely not. I mean, I, there'd just be too many tiles around and too cumbersome and fiddly. Whereas as it is, as a two player game, it's really elegant, really quick with a huge amount of strategy and depth and a huge amount of replayability as well. Because, OK, you're doing the same goal, you're going to have the same payouts at the same times. But because you randomise that circle of the tiles, the order in which tiles are going to become available, at which point you're going to reach whatever tiles will be different in each game. If you are a new player coming to this against someone who's experienced, you will probably be destroyed. But that is common in a lot of games that have no luck in them. And that is this game. There is no luck. There's no dice. There's no random cards. The only randomness is in the setup. But if you want something lighter and with more luck, this probably isn't going to be the game for you. If you want a short, quick, strategic, engaging game, that works as a filler. It's a bit timey on the setup. It takes almost as long to set it up as it does to play. Um, this could well be the game for you. It's one I've added to my list of my wish list of games. It is one I want to get, and that's the best recommendation I could give to any game. Yes, it is only two players. That is a flaw, but thankfully the majority of my playing is two players, and it has that theme that my wife really likes, so that helps. Okay, that's my thoughts on Patchwork. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Of course, if you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends and family. And also take a look at us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching, and bye for now.